Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's. Welcome to our daily mass. Here in this town, here in this place, here we are standing face to face. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. Here for the broken, here for the strong. Here in this temple we belong. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. Our God is here. Here in the Word, God is revealed. Here where the wounded can be healed. Here in our hearts, here in our lives, our God is here. Here we become what we receive here in this eucharistic feast we are his body living as one our god is here and we cry holy 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 are you we cry holy 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 and true Our God is here, our God is here. Good Tuesday morning to all of you as we gather again to celebrate God's incredible love for us in this gift of word and sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we begin our day, we acknowledge that our Mass intention today is for William Wiedenfeld, and as we come together, we call on God's incredible mercy and compassion toward us 
his forgiveness of our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy, carry Christ have mercy, His day lays on. Christ have mercy, His day lays on. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy, carry May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who opened wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants an increase of the grace that you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated at this time and listen attentively to the proclamation of God's Word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders, and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but yet did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I put my life in your hands. Father, I put my life in your hands. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Father, I put my life in your hands. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. 
I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Father, I put my life in your hands. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Father, I put my life in your hands. Father, I put my life in your hands. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. bread of life says the Lord whoever comes to me will never hunger Alleluia 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 The Lord be with you A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John The crowd said to Jesus What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. One thing that is very clear in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles is that Stephen was firmly convinced about Jesus and full of faith in his life, and he becomes, as we describe him, the first martyr in the Christian community. His faith was so strong that he was incredibly bold as he stood against those that were really persecuting him in this deep way, even finally then stoning him to death. And I trust that as you heard that text proclaimed to you again this morning, that you made the connection between what he said as he was going to his death and what we hear Jesus saying in Luke's Passion account. And I want to recall for you that when he was in his most passionate moment on the cross, Jesus says, and I quote back to you from Luke's Gospel, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing And finally, he says, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then if you take what Stephen says as he is being martyred, he says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. These are so parallel that we begin to understand that in a very real kind of way, Stephen is not only paralleling, but he's drawing his energy and his spiritual life at that critical moment from Jesus in his passion himself. And we can say that his life and his mission, Stephen's that is, parallels very much that of Jesus in his life. 
Incredibly, the Holy Spirit, I think, was so much at work in Stephen that he had tra been transformed by the Spirit to the point that he was becoming like the Master himself. All of us in our life are called on to model our lives on Jesus Christ, just as Stephen did, and to take on his person, if not his personality, to become like the Master as the bread of life, which is the theme of today, or in the many other titles that Jesus has to become like the Good Shepherd or like the Divine Physician, whichever of those images and titles of Jesus that you might want to use. Clearly, one of the significant pieces of the story today in Stephen's life is that God commands us also to forgive those who offend us or sin against us, even those who put us to death, for you and I as well to listen to and to become like Jesus and like Stephen. Now, the image in the gospel itself in this section of, of the gospel of Luke is the bread of life discourse. And Jesus again here uses this image that he is the bread of life. And as I was reflecting on this last night, it reminded me, this profound theological image of Jesus reminded me that in my own home, my mother would always bake homemade bread. And it brought back to mind the smells, the uh, vision of her doing that, kneading the, the dough and, and letting it rise then in a bowl with a, a cloth always on top of it, and I'd peek in to see how big it had gotten. And then finally, after she was baking it and brought it out of the oven and put it on the cabinet to cool, the smell of the bread, as delicious as it was, and one of the things that my dad very often would ask is at the table is, where is the bread if my mother forgot to put it on the table? He loved to eat bread with gravy and meat and all of those things, or sometimes in the morning with uh, jelly and butter on it. And so that image of Jesus as the bread of life remind me of this home image of my own mother and father and the kind of dynamic that went on in the home environment with eating. And it's a very wonderful image for all of us because we know this, that bread is indeed a staple of life. Even if we have nothing else to eat, if we have bread, it's going to nourish us enough to where our body can sustain itself through anything in life. This image, then, of, of Jesus as bread of life is posed to us in this gospel today as Jesus technically is really exegeting. That's a fancy uh, word in, in theology, interpreting that passage of Exodus 14, verse 15, where it said that he gave them bread from heaven, and this was referring to Moses. But Jesus reminds them that, yes, they ate, manna that is an earthly food, a perishable food that nurtures human hunger, but that he himself is the bread of life, a heavenly food that f comes from God the Father himself, an eternal food, a spiritual food for all of us. And so as St. Leo the Great reminds us, and I quote him back to you, the effect of our sharing in the body and blood of Christ is to change us into what we receive. It's very much the image of Stephen being changed into this image of Jesus himself and how you and I then are to be transformed into the bread of life itself as we share it around the Eucharistic table. We now gather all of our prayers from wherever we're celebrating in this Mass today, Corpus, all the way through different parts of Texas, even Colorado, and those prayers are to be heard by God our Heavenly Father as we plead to Him today. Lord, Your Word is full of power. Let it take root in the hearts of all of our leaders in the church, in our national leaders, and with our local officials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We thank you, Father, for this season of spring, which is renewing our countryside. Let Easter renew our Christian life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Bring all the dead into the light that, don't, that no darkness can quench. May we all meet in joy with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those in our St. Peter's community that are sick or that have deceased, 
that our Heavenly Father looked over them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray in a very special way for all of the teenagers of our community that are in high schools that are disappointed by all the disruption to their studies, to their flow of life, and a special prayer for those that are seniors that are to be graduating who may be robbed of their graduation events, even of proms themselves. They may not be defeated in this, but that they may see the deeper meaning and purpose of their lives in what they have accomplished in and through their hard work and their family support and love of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we place all of our prayers before you this morning, pleading that you hear them and that in your goodness and love for us, respond to them in the ways you see fit, not what we may desire. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sings together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, 
he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you, <clears throat> which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance to peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Archbishop, Michael, our Auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire faithful your Son has gained as your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you this morning. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil." Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other this sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And again, as we powerfully reflect on Jesus as the bread of life, and as You at home who cannot receive sacramentally, Let us pray together this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon Your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those You are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yesterday, Governor Abbott had his uh, news conference uh, speaking about opening the economy, all business in uh, Texas again. And as you noticed, if you listen to any of that news coverage, it's going to be a phased-in process, not only for businesses, but also for churches and worshiping communities. 
And so we can't expect in the first weeks of this to all be in a very packed church. Uh, We'll be taking this into consideration, and surely the uh, county leaders and city leaders, leaders throughout Texas are taking this and beginning to apply it in their own counties and cities. And we in the church also will have Archbishop Gustavo and his staff who are being consulted by public health officials and government officials on how to do this in church. And again, for the diocese crossing many city jurisdictions and county jurisdictions and finding a middle ground for all of that. So we will be held accountable to follow what the archbishop gives us as his directives, and we'll be announcing all of that to you and making that available online. So please stay in tune with us. Secondly, this morning, our staff is going to be having a meeting on several different issues, including, again, the reopening of the church and how that will be phased in and done. But even more importantly, for the interim, uh, continuing to sponsor some new events that the staff and members of our parish will be doing, including some more concerts and things of that nature. Uh, and we'll be deciding on what those events will be. And so, again, stay online to get the latest uh, news from our parish community. We encourage all of you to stay in contact with one another. Our parish directory is a wonderful resource at this time where you can go and look up your friends' names from the community and call them or text them or email them and uh, share with them what this experience has been like and how we're missing each other and all of those things in the community Uh, Our bonds together as as Christians is what gives us strength. It is what renews us and what sustains us in a crisis event like we're experiencing. Let us now bow our heads and pray God's blessing. Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us the same strength of faith, courage, and conviction that St. Stephen did to the point that he was willing to go to his death. Help us also to imitate Christ in our life to live in his person and to become what we celebrate in the breaking of the bread. And we pray this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Peace.